Thank you. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Yasoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yasoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yasoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yasoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Kupi jana vallava giri vardhari Jai Kupi jana vallava giri vardhari Yasoda Nandana Brajjana Ranjana Yasoda Nandana Brajjana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari
Shri Shri Radha Girdhari Ke Srila Prabhupada Ke Jaham Vishpad Paramaham Saprabhaji Gacharya Shautar Sata Shri Shri Madei Si Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Iskand Founder Acharya Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jaham Vishpad Paramaham Saprabhati Kacharya Shota Rasata Shishimad Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai Jaham Vishpad Paramaham Sashila Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai Jaham Vishpad Paramaham Sashila Satchadananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai Jaham Vishpad Paramaham Sashila Vaishnava Sarva Bhoma Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnavarindi ki jai, Nama Chari Ashil Haridas Thakur ki jai, Jai Rupa Sanatan Bhatta Raghunath, Shri Jeeva Gopala Bhatta Dasa Raghunath, Sad Goswami Prabhagana ki jai, Prem Sikaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindi ki jai, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopakopinath, Shamakun Radhakun Giri Govardhan ki jai, Kantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Samaveda Gaur Bhakta Vrindi ki jai, Gaur Premanandi. Our glories to the assembled devotees. Our glories to the assembled devotees. Our glories to the assembled devotees. Our glories to Shishi Guru and Gauranga. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Namam Vishnu Pattaya Krishna Pastaya Madhali Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namani Namaste Saswati Devi. Gaurvani Vicharne Nivasheshi Sunadi Vishadistarne. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We're getting to hear from Srimad Bhagavatam, 5th Canto, Chapter 1, Activities of Maharaj Priyavrata, Text Number 4. Samshayo Ayam Mahan Brahman Samshayoyam Mahan Brahman Dharagara Sitadishu Dharagara Sitadishu Saktasya Yat Sidhir Abhut Saktasya Yat Sidhir Abhut Krishna cha matir achuta Krishna cha matir achuta Samshayo yam mahan brahman Dharagara sutadishu Saktasya yat sidhir adbhut Krishna cha matir achuta Chuta Samshayo Yam Mahan Brahman Dharagara Sutadishu Sutasya Yat Sidhira Bhut Krishna Cha Matira Chuta Samshayo Yam Mahan Brahman Dharagara Saradishu Samshayo Yam Mahan Brahman Dharagara Satadishu Saktasya yat sadhira adbhut Krishna cha matira chuta Samshayo yam mahan brahman 
तारागारस्थारिशु संशयम हं ब्रह्मन सक्तस्य यत् सिद्धिरद्भुत कृष्णे च मतिरचिता संशया doubt अयम् this महान great ब्रह्मन ओ ब्राह्मण Dara to the wife, Agara home, Suta children, Adishu, and so on. Saktasya of a person attached, yet because Siddhi perfection, Adbut became Krishna. And Krishna, cha, also, mati, attachment, achuta, infallible. Translation: The king continued, King Parikshit. Oh, great Brahmana, this is my great doubt. How was it possible for a person like King Priyavrata, who was so attached to wife, children, and home? To achieve the topmost infallible perfection in Krishna consciousness, purport. King Parikshit wondered how a person so attached to wife, children, and home could become so perfectly Krishna conscious. Pallad Maharaj said, "Matir ne Krishna parata sotova matobipet yet agriha vratanam agriha vrata." One who's taken a vow to execute family duties. Has no chance to become Krishna conscious. This is because most Griyavratas are guided by sense gratification, and therefore gradually glide down to the darkest regions of material existence. Adanta Gopir Vishatam to Mishram. How can they possibly come perfect in Krishna consciousness? Maharaj Preekshit asked Shukadev Goswami to resolve this great doubt. Om Gyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Salakya Chakshun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Swapadandikam Vandeyaham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagajatam Sahagana Raghunatham Vitam Tham Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Shcha He Krishna Kanana Sindho Dina Bandho Jigatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurange Radhe Vrindavani Shari Vrishabhana Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Pancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhivacha Paditanam Bhavanibhyo Vaishnabibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So, this is a continuation of Maharaj Parikshit expressing his doubt. He'd heard at the very end of uh, Canto Four, 
His gurus say that, uh, let's read exactly what he says, text 27 and 8. Twenty-seven, last chapter, thirty-first, the fourth canto. Although Maharaj Priyavrata received instructions from the great sage Narda, he still engaged in ruling the earth. After fully enjoying material possessions, he divided his property among his ten sons. He then attained a position by which he could return home back to Godhead. So there's a couple of assumptions made in this uh, verse by Prikshit Maharaj. First one is that he's so attached to his wife, children, home. It says he ruled the earth in that verse, but in actuality he was given rule of the entire universe. Big responsibility. And he just, he can't believe it. I mean, in the association of his spiritual master, Preakshit Maharaj is simply wanting to hear and chant and remember the glories of the Lord and his devotees. There'd be no way he would want to return home. One time we had a devotee who was diagnosed with a terminal illness. And he thought, okay, I'm going to take, can I have Babaji? I just want to chant Hare Krishna all the time. And so he tried his best to do that in Mayapur. A couple of pastimes in relationship to this devotee, but the one that I'm going to refer to is, well, there came a second opinion, medical opinion, and he actually didn't have the terminal illness. So what did he do? He gave up his Babaji duties of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, and he disappeared. Thought he had a new lease on life that he could enjoy. Go out for sense gratification. Very sad. So Pariksha Maharaj is wondering, he, he's got the association of Narda Muni. Narda Muni has a very high success rate in terms of convincing people to take to Krishna consciousness. If he preaches to somebody, basically basically speaking, they're finished. <laughs> Their material life is finished. I mean, you can only think, I can only think of a couple of persons. You know, association was given, but he wasn't really trying to... Uh, change their heart to Krishna consciousness in, 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 in terms of associating with King Kamsa. He said, what are you doing? Don't you realize Krishna's taking birth? That he who will kill you is in Vraj? You're just going to sit around and mope? Oh, I didn't get to kill. It wasn't the eighth child after all. She was a girl. You know? He said, snap out of it. He actually pushed him in the direction where he consulted with his ministers and he went and killed all, he killed so many children that had been born in the last couple of weeks. Vishnath Chakravarti Thakur explains that those children killed were the <laughs> followers of King Kamsa that happened to live in Braj. None of the Brajvasis could be killed by a demon like that. Then you have, uh, comes to mind, Daksha. Now, Daksha didn't give him a chance to preach to him. You've preached to my two sets of sons. Dravida Prabhu mentioned the names yet the other day, Wednesday. Ayasvas, all Ayasvas, 10,000 uh, sons, 1,000 set of sons. He turned them all to the path of the Paramahamsa, complete detachment from this material world and complete absorption in devotional service to Krishna. So he didn't really try. He just got the brunt of his uh, chastisement, even curse from Daksha. But if he puts his mind to it and tries to give someone a conditioned soul devotional service, his success rate is pretty dang high. He's the personification of devotional service, bhakti shakti. 
empowered to perform and, and deliver devotional service to others. So anyway, he's quite bewildered. He's associated with him. And yet he's turning his back on the instructions he's given him. Well, it's all going to unfold in the future verses of this chapter. Really wonderful pastime. But first, let's talk about what did Maharaj Pariksit do with his doubt? He sees what looks like a fault in the part of Maharaj Priyavrata. He became a Griyavrata. He became, a, he became evidently a, a Griyamedi. There's a big difference between Griyamedi and Grihasta. Griyamedi, the center, uh, the focus is on me and my extensions, my sense gratification, their sense gratification. It's the goal of life. A Grihasta puts Krishna as the center. Instructions of guru and the worship of Krishna in the center of his life. His wife, his children are not his own. They're Krishna's, servants and maidservants. The house is not mine, it's the temple of the Lord. For Prabhus who are unmarried, it would be the ashram of the guru. It's not my home. So anyway, big difference, night and day. And I think we all understand that. Uh, Srila Prabhupada quotes Prahlad Maharaj. This is basically in the very beginning where Prahlad's brought before his father, Ranyakashipu, and he's asked, what's the best thing you've learned? Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smarnam, Panasevanam. The nine activities of devotional service are the goal of life. They're the best of all knowledge. It is the best of all knowledge. Well, that infuriated him. He looked at the teachers of his son. If looks could kill. You know, what are you doing? What are you teaching my son? It wasn't us. We never said anything like that. Please. So then he turned to his son again. He said, well, where have you learned this? Glorification of our enemy, Vishnu, who killed your uncle. My brother. And basically this verse that's quoted in the purport, half of it, is Prahlad Maharaj is telling his father, well, you don't have to worry because you're never going to become Krishna conscious. Not even if someone tries to instruct you or you listen to, you know, you try to apply your own intelligence, etc. Why? Because you are simply focused on pleasing your mind and senses. That's the second half of the verse. Adanta gobir vishatam to mishram. That was also quoted, wasn't it? Puna pumas charvita charvinanam. So the verse goes as such. Prahlad Maharaj replied, because of their uncontrolled senses, persons too addicted to materialistic life make progress towards hellish conditions and repeatedly chew that which has already been chewed. Their inclinations towards Krishna are never aroused, either by the instructions of others, by their own efforts, or by a combination of both. So the Griya Vratta, the Griya Meti, they take birth again. And since gratification being dissatisfying, unfulfilling, you try harder and harder. And Kali Yuga is the perfect example in this regard. You just look around and the sense gratification that people are endeavoring to engage in just becomes more and more gross, more and more degraded because their consciousness is becoming degraded. They're gradually progressing towards literally hell but certainly hellish suffering, and they have to take birth repeatedly. So the assumption of, the premise of Preksha Maharaj is correct. I don't think anybody here would argue with the fact that if you're determined to enjoy sense gratification, bogai shparyai prasaktanam, uh, attached to women, wealth, etc., then you're not going to become 
Krishna conscious. No one's going to disagree with that. He's completely correct. That's why he's bewildered. How could this disciple of Narada Muni become, bewil- uh, become degraded? How could he lose the gem that was offered to him by his guru? But the assumption is incorrect, isn't it? As the pastime unfolds, I think Lord Brahma used the word incredibly. Krishna is ordering you to enjoy this facility. Krishna wants you to take up this service. And while doing so, know that you have my blessings and the blessings of the Lord and you will not be deviated in the least. Because that was the question that Priyavrata asked his father, Manu, Swayambhuva Manu. Now, Swayambhuva Manu is a Mahajan. He's one of the twelve Mahajans. And he's his father. Being a Mahajan, he's obviously a pure devotee. So he has authority. He has position, no question. But his son asks the question when he, re, when he instructs him, please take up this service. There's a great need. There's no one else. It's your responsibility. He said, well, if I take up this service, will I be deviated from my Krishna consciousness? Is the potential there that I'll, I'll fall down from Krishna consciousness? So... Things aren't looking too good. So Lord Brahma leaves from his planet, Satyaloka, and immediately comes down to... He's the reinforcements. I mean, like I said, Narada Muni is very convincing. Why would I give up this Naishtika Brahmacharya life of, of, of solely and wholly focusing on direct devotional service to Krishna? Hearing, chanting, remembering, serving. Why? And take up something that generally is karma or karma yoga at best, but certainly entangling, dicey, risky. So Lord Brahma comes down and says, we're all forced. We all have to follow the instructions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Me, Lord Shiva, Narada, Manu, and you. And he smiled. And he told him, don't worry, you'll be safe. You'll be fixed in your Krishna consciousness. Now, Pariksit Maharaj, when he saw this fault on the part of Priyavrata in his mind, because the premise is correct, if you become attached to sense gratification, the biggest attachment, the hardest, tightest knot is attraction to the opposite sex. Man for woman, woman for man, etc. If that takes place in the heart, very complicated, very difficult to become free of the disease and become a surrendered soul in the service of Guru and Krishna. His premise was correct, so what did he do with his doubt? Did he go online? Say, hey, did you hear? Priyavrata came totally attached to his wife and children and home. And my God, what a Kriya Mahi. Can you believe it? Trying to relish some taste in finding fault in a devotee. No, he has a doubt. That's not what he does. This is what he does. He takes it to his spiritual master and he inquires. How is this possible? What's the story? And the spiritual master will eradicate the doubt. That is the example for each and every one of us. Life is full of perplexities. Even in Krishna consciousness, we come across situations and reciprocations that are very difficult and challenging. Just because this is a spiritual movement doesn't mean it's utopia. Not by any means. It's the opportunity to completely surrender in the service of Guru, Vaishnavas, and Krishna. So he set the proper example for us just like uh, Arjuna did. 
he didn't know what the heck to do when he was at, you know confronted with his family members with his guru etc all wanting to fight to the death for a kingdom a piece of dirt sovereignty over people the sense gratification facilities that go along with that I can't do that these are worshipful personalities and he quoted so much scripture he was morally correct in his premises in his thoughts but he didn't know what the heck to do now I'm confused about my duty and have lost all composure because of miserly weakness in this condition I'm asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me now I'm your disciple and a soul surrendered to you please instruct me that was uh, 2 7 Bhagavad Gita 2 8 I can find no means to drive away this grief which is drying up my senses I will not be able to dispel it even if I win a prosperous unrivaled kingdom on earth with sovereignty like the demigods in heaven Sanjaya said having spoken thus Arjuna chastised her the enemies told Krishna Govinda I shall not fight and fell silent. O descendant of heart, at that time Krishna, smiling in the midst of both the armies, spoke the following words to the grief-stricken Arjuna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, while speaking learned words, you're mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. So I read the little group of verses because it ultimately ends up in the instruction the first instruction given by the spiritual masters you're a fool you think you're fixed in your moral con uh, principles you think you you know understand so much I'm trying to offer respect to my authorities to my seniors etc he said you're a fool you don't know what is what and this is the position of a subordinate to his superior, a disciple to his spiritual master. If one asks for guidance or instruction, one should be willing to take it in whatever form it is offered. It may be sweetly spoken, it may be strongly spoken. The, spirit, the disciple, the serious, sincere devotee should be ready to be guided at every step in their Krishna consciousness by those who are qualified to do so. I live to be corrected. What a nice mantra. To be that humble, knowing that I could improve in my devotional service to Guru and Krishna what a wonderful mentality so Parikshit and Arjuna all the Acharyas they set the proper example for us and it pinches the false ego you're going to stay away getting a little comfortable there it pinches the false ego, but that's the problem. The false ego is the barrier. It's like build the wall, you know. Build a border. Well, we have steel framed borders around our heart. It's called the false ego and the disease of wanting to enjoy separately from Krishna. We have to allow spiritual authorities to dismantle that wall to destroy it to give us the tools with which we pray for the empowerment to first of all recognize a problem they say in Bengal problem big problem big problem the false ego big false ego since time immemorial recognize the problem and then do that which will assist us in overcoming the problem. This is so important. I was looking, here's a minor correction for uh, 
class I gave on Vacatia Pundit, I read from the, uh, I could read it verbatim, but I read, after Lord Chaitanya's taking sannyas, Vakeshwara Pandit accompanied Lord Chaitanya to Jagannath Puri. So I made the assumptions. Assumptions can be <laughs> risky, but I assumed he was one of the five that went with Lord Chaitanya in taking sannyas and then traveling onwards to Puri after Shantipur festival. But no, it was Lord Nityananda Gadadhar, Bhart, Brahmananda Bharti, Chandra Shekhar, Acharya, and Mukunda. It wasn't Vakeshwar Pandit, so I don't have the Antya Leela of Chaitanya Bhagavat at my house, but I'll look just to make sure. But I imagine those same personalities accompanied Lord Chaitanya onward to Puri after. But didn't I just say assume? <laughs> I just see how the mind works. We'll have to see. I'm not sure. So I don't know. I'm going to look and find out. So anyway, finding fault with the devotees is the most suicidal mentality you can have in your Krishna consciousness. You want to advance in Krishna consciousness, but simultaneously maintain the bad habit of finding fault in devotees? It's not going to go well. You're going to make it very, very, very difficult on yourself. You wonder why you're not feeling the bliss? You wonder why everybody else is getting the mercy and you're not? Or if you're so puffed up, you won't be recognizing the mercy that others are getting. The wonderful example that your Prabhu's, our Prabhu's set for us. I was reading, looking to find that uh, the associates going with uh, Lord Chaitanya when taking sannyas. And one of the lines that he said when he met Keshava Bharti, it's a very short purport by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, wherein he said, some, some say that Keshava Bharti was a disciple of Madhavinda Puri. And he told his sannyas guru to be that I simply want to engage in pure devotional service to the lotus feet of Krishna. I want nothing else. And in the purport, Bhakti Siddhanta said that the bhajan pranali, pranali means the process whereby you can achieve perfection. Like if you go to Radha Kun, you can associate with other branches of the Gaudiya tree outside our Bhakti Siddhanta and Srila Prabhupada branch. And sometimes they'll give you a process. It's a bona fide process, whether or not they are qualified or you to give or you're qualified to ex receive is another thing. That to be on the highly elevated levels of Krishna consciousness, certainly a liberated soul, but to begin meditating on a spiritual identity, spiritual characteristics, spiritual service rendered to the maidservants, Radha and Krishna, or servants of the Lord, etc. <laughs> but Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, Lord Chaitanya's bhajana pranali was that he continuously worshipped Lord Chaitanya and internally he always cultivated becoming more tolerant than a tree, uh, humbler than a blade of grass, always wanting to offer respects to others, not desiring any respect whatsoever for oneself. And he said, this is the example we have to follow. Lord Chaitanya, he, he, he was the perfect person Bhagavat. He showed us how to live the Bhagavatam. He showed us how to surrender, abandon all other priorities in life and simply surrender to Krishna. So respect of others realizing we're unworthy of respect and we have plenty of faults. Why not let somebody point them out to me, help me overcome them? And tomorrow being the disappearance day of Shiva's pundit, 
very dear devotee of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will just share one pastime that relates to this particular point of not using our intelligence to dwell on the shortcomings of the devotees. Because don't get me wrong, you can find faults in every one of us. You can find faults in, in the pure devotees, you can find faults in Krishna. Krishna will give you that intelligence if you wish. But we don't want to dwell on these things. We want to dwell on our own dirty laundry. Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, he said, oh, they may, there may be some difficulty, some shortcoming, some challenge in the life of a devotee, but that's between him and Krishna. They're engaged in devotional service. Krishna will work it out for the devotee. It's not my business. So anyway, Lord Chaitanya, uh, it's interesting to note that uh, Advaita Charya's home was the, was the center for the Vaishnav Sangha. And when Lord Chaitanya manifests his devotional qualities after getting initiation from Ishwar Puri, coming back to, from Gaya to Mayapur, it shifted. After Lord Nityananda came on the scene, which was shortly thereafter, Nityananda chose this Brahmin to perform Vyasa Puja, which is going to be the following day after his arrival. And that Brahmin was Srivas Pandit. Lord Chaitanya said, you've been bestowed a great honor. Are you capable of fulfilling the service? You have all the prerequisite paraphernalia, etc. He said, yes, my Lord. We can perform it nicely, very nicely, for your pleasure. So... Lord Nityananda basically went to Srivas's home and he didn't leave. Srivas and his wife Malini had parental affection for Lord Chaitanya from birth. They were dear friends of Jagannath Mishra and Mother Sachi. Malini gave nice motherly advice to Sachi, he assisted her in so many ways. And Nityananda he came to Srivasa's home and entered right into the same devotional reciprocation with Srivasa and Malini, especially his wife. She treated Nityananda as her own, very own son, feeding him, clothing him, reciprocating as a mother would with a little, very young child. Lord Nityananda and his devotional absorption of this in the spiritual realm, devotional absorption in his emotional, ex, his devotional ecstasies. She reciprocated. He, he accepted all that service. So one time, because of the eccentricities of Lord Nityananda, he would be labeled a crazy man by any gentleman of society. No doubt, crazy. So Lord Nityananda, Lord Chaitanya came to Srivas Pandit's home one time. And he said, you know, you're such a respected Brahmin in, the, in, in our community. And it concerns me because you're giving shelter to Nityananda Prabhu. We don't know his caste. His activities are so erratic. He's always causing mischief. And I'm concerned that people will find fault with you. Association you keep is, are, will be the qualities you will develop. Their qualities you will develop. And Srivas Pandit said, My Lord, why are you testing me in this way? I know that Lord Nityananda is your second self. That through his body you render devotional services to Krishna. Lord Nityananda is my life and soul. And even if I saw Nityananda Prabhu enter into a liquor store, a tavern, or I saw him walking hand in hand with a low class woman, unchaste woman, still my determined devotion to Nityananda would not be deviated one iota. 
And when Lord Chaitanya heard Srivas express his unshakable faith and surrender in Lord Nityananda, he roared. Oh, Srivas! You have such devotion for my Nittai. And he embraced it. He said, I've become purchased by you. Nittai and myself, we will always eternally remain your, your sons, dependent upon you. The Lord very much appreciates cooperation amongst devotees. He very much appreciates devotees who like to speak well of others, point out the good qualities of the devotees. Lord Chaitanya sometimes would speak as if he had five mouths glorifying the devotee. He relished glorifying the devotees. And this is what we should cultivate. Gratitude. Appreciation. Because whatever it may be in whatever shape or form or circumstances, what have you, it's, it's all Krishna's direct mercy upon his devotee. Helping us face the lessons of purification that we need to undergo, that we need to pass, to overcome. Circumstances are always perfect if we will surrender and remain surrendered to Krishna, Guru, and his devotees. And I want to mention one other side note talking about assumptions in, in Vijay Prabhu's class I made mention of uh, that was yesterday. The subtle weeds and anarthas that can pop up. But I want to also share with you, Prabhus, and it's a shame not everybody's here to hear it. I don't know if they could appreciate it or not. But I want to share with you that just because we have a position of authority, it doesn't mean that we're necessarily best at doing practically speaking, any service. If we think that we're the doer, when we have a position of authority, we tend to take credit for the service ourselves, and we th tend to be a little over-absorbed in our own, what we perceive as qualifications. And that mentality eclipses, it stunts, the ability to appreciate the qualities of others. Of course this Prabhu is better at doing this than me. Or this Prabhu has this, uh, this quality. What have you. Authority, position in and of itself, in one sense can mean absolutely nothing. Because if you're not pleasing Krishna... Krishna doesn't care, practically speaking, for any of the temporary designations that we eternal souls possess and you try to utilize in his service. But he's not really, con he's, he's not attracted to the designations. One time Srila Prabhupada, he had uh, the heart attack or there was some health challenge. And Krishna asked him, I'd like you to come back now. And Srila Prabhupada said, but I've just started. I have so much more to do. They're so young. They need so much more training. And Prabhupada said, Krishna told him, all right, continue on with your nonsense. Krishna wants the face-to-face -face personal reciprocation in his village. This is just a... Reformatory school. This is just the opportunity to become purified and learn the science of devotional service and applying it. 
desiring and applying it in our lives. Like I said, Manu, he had the authority. He had the position. By culture, his son should cooperate with him. But who had more potency in influence over Priya Vrata? Sainabhuvamanu or Narada Muni? Narada Muni. That's why Brahma came very quickly. He knew this isn't going to go well. He's going to follow the, the suggestions, the advice of his spiritual master. So he came down and set things aright. And Priyavrata accepted. He didn't resent it. Narada Muni wasn't resentful. They took up the service. Priyavrata took up the service. So I was talking about a subtlety. Authority, position, it means nothing if you're not surrendering in that service. And as I said about Lord Chaitanya's bhajana, pranali. If you're not cultivating the reality of your identity, that I'm just a servant of Krishna's servants. Whatever position, whatever service I have, it's simply to give me facility to surrender in that way. Surrender and serve. Prabhupada said, I, to my credit, the secret of my success, I never became master. I always remained a servant. Priyavrata will come through this. Of course, in his advancement in Krishna consciousness, as time goes on in the execution of service, of course he feels himself fallen. If we aren't feel, realizing our shortcomings, how are we going to grow? We don't realize the need to grow. How will we accept the purifying critiques and suggestions and advice given by others? Very difficult. Is there any questions or comments on any of this topic? I had uh, two. One's a general question, and one is more of a question that is asking for guidance that I think might be helpful. The first is about we talk so much about the hellish planets and the sense enjoyment. We talk what about the hellish planets and the but sense. You said too much, or we, what, how, what was the sentence? We talk about hellish planets. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, I'm not talking right into the mic. Okay. The, the main question is this: I'm wondering if animal birth versus human birth in a hellish planet. Uh, is it better to be on Earth as an animal or as a human form in the hellish planets? And what's the difference of that? Because we develop animal instincts. Vijay was saying humans on Earth are like polished animals. Mm -hmm. So what signifies if we take an animal birth as opposed to going to a hellish planet in human form? Well, there are different kinds of, thank you for the question. There are different kinds of hellish planets. But I think you're referring to Yamaraj's planets of punishment. Am I correct? So he has dominion over the sinful conditioned souls. Those who sin, they're punished. They suffer. If your sins are extreme enough, you lose the human form of life. It's only in human form you can engage in activities whereby you can improve yourself or degrade yourself. You have the God-given independence and the ability to act upon it. So the sinful conditioned soul who loses the human form of life goes down to Yamaraj's planets of punishment, and there they are punished in such a way that they will become acclimated and, and embracing of the idea of taking a lore species birth if you or someone was to try and take you right now and, 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 and put you into a cockroach body 
you would kick and scream and say, no, 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 no. But when they put you through the suffering, you eat enough. You're subjected to enough hellish torture of what the life of such a species would be. You become acclimated to it and you accept it and you take the birth there. So we, we take animal birth after we pay for our sins in hellish planets? Not only are you paying for the sins, but you're trained in how to accept another set of senses in a lower life form. And then how you will identify, you will identify I got my cockroach wife, I got my cockroach children, I got a nice little setup in the toilet. <laughs> Life's good. If the text that we're reading is about attachment to family in some mm -hmm. part. So I might need some clarification on the factual basis by which I'm inquiring right now, but the guidance that I'm looking for is about I've learned that one of the first mistakes we make when the light goes on and we kind of realize Krishna consciousness for ourselves is we run home to our parents and we try to convert them because it's such a beautiful thing we've just learned. And I think we're like, oh, for a thousand, you know, trying to do that. It's very difficult. Uh, I think each one of us here, most of us, probably our parents don't practice and our, our brothers and sisters don't practice. I mean, some of us are so fortunate that mm. our parents took to it and, you know, now we are, or maybe they took to it after we did, but quite often they don't really recognize totally what we're doing. In the strata, they can be inimical towards us, they might be kind of neutral, some can be supportive, but they're not really dipping their toes in the water, per se. We're, we're kind of left on our own to explore this thing that we know is real and we know is so true. So I, I've been given some reassurance that if we progress far enough in Krishna consciousness, that our parents receive benedictions or blessings from that and so much so that even grandparents and grandparents and generations can receive that that's how powerful it is for a devotee to be made so how do we regard our family during the time that we're practicing krishna consciousness if we're not supposed to be so focused on them and our attachment with them and are they receiving benefit from us progressing on this path even if they're not interested in doing it themselves. Well, we owe a great debt to our parents for having given us this, this body. They clothed and fed us. They did the best they could. They wanted to just replicate their conditioned consciousness upon us. But by the mercy of Guru, Vaishnavas, and Krishna, we've come to understand that's not what I want. The, the path of repeated birth and death. So, you can always pray, and it's not a bad idea to pray. Regularly for your parents' well-being and Krishna consciousness. You never know. Devotees share a magazine, a book, or books with their parents. They send prasadam to their parents. They try to be the loving son, respectful more so than they ever were as a, as a uh, you know, little polished animal son. In my own personal experience, my mother realized, my gosh, you know, he got out of the stupor of daily intoxication the mode of ignorance and actually has clarity of thought and you know solid purpose and he's worshiping god i wish she was worshiping god the way i do through jesus christ but you know she had her own rationale how you know jesus is very kind and he has at one point in his life accepted jesus as his Savior. So she had hope for me and she prayed for me. So if you're a good son and you show respect and you care, affection is nice. It's natural. But it's all about recognizing you've had millions of fathers, 
Balaram might tell that story of the sun passing away during the kirtan and the nocturnal pa uh, kirtan of Lord Chaitanya in his home. Son said, I've had so many fathers and mothers. You know, it's, that's the reality. So these are servants and maidservants of the Lord. So uh, you do your best, however that small that may be, and you're not overwhelmed, and it's just a part of your service because right now you are in training, and you're trying to, you know, get a little, you know, put the wild stallion of your mind into a corral and let the guru throw the rope around its neck and put a saddle on it and break your unbridled mind. So that's your main priority, doing whatever you're asked to the best of your ability because you want to please guru, the devotees, and Krishna. And yes, they will benefit, Prabhupada said, that the parents will recognize their good fortune when they give up their body. If you become a serious, surrendered devotee of Krishna, Guru and the Lord are not stingy. They are wanting more than anything for all of us to return to the eternal service of the Lord. And the parents will be facilitated in that way. Because the Lord and the spiritual master recognize, oh, these are the parents of this nice devotee. Let's, let's, let's express our gratitude. Let's bless them. Let's give them the opportunity for devotional service. Any other question or comment? What's your name again? What? Daniel. Daniel? Yeah. Nice name. Oh, thank you. I uh, I was just thinking, and if we're supposed to serve to Krishna, right? My understanding is that we want to help as many people as we can to have a Krishna conscious. Mm -hmm. And so if we go back to Krishna, how are we supposed to help people in coming back to Krishna conscious? If we go back to if Krishna, we, how we, do we help people come back? Yeah. Because if, if we're already absorbed into Krishna consciousness, how are you supposed to get the others to come with you? Well, the, the attraction is in our absorption in Krishna's service. Then the, the beautiful qualities that lie hidden, that are contaminated, that are, you know, <laughs> I'm thinking of an old rotten piece of fruit. You know, they're moldy. They're... they're you know, our potential has not been realized at all, but through devotional service, the qualities of you and I, the soul, do become manifest. Those are so attractive. That's where in the, having received the blessings of Guru and Krishna, that, that one has the ability to influence others. We want everyone to go back home to God, and that's the desire of the Acharyas whose picture on the altar. They wanted every, all conditioned souls of the universe to go back to Godhead. And in some small portion, we should, you know, inculcate that. Embrace the same mood. At least I can help my friends, my neighbors, those I go out and canvas to. It's a glorious life. It's a great adventure. Nothing, nothing compares. Does that, does that? Vijay, did you want to say something? Well, there you go. <laughs> Quit pretending to be a creeper and <laughs> is sharing his true nature with us. We want to help people go back to Krishna. He comes to, to help us. But he wants us to go back also. So, and, and we shouldn't think that we're so great. Well, I'll just stay in the material world and birth after birth. And Actually, one devotee said that to Prabhupada. Prabhupada, I just want to come back birth after birth and distribute your books. And Prabhupada said, don't think you're so advanced. Mm. Do your business, get purified, go back to home, back to God. So, but, you know, in this journey that we're on, we try to help as many as we can. 
But it's interesting that he gave a, another devotee said the same thing. Prabhupada, I want to come back birth after birth and distribute your books. And Prabhupada said, first class. <laughs> so Prabhupada said different things about that. But, you know, Krishna wants us to go back, you know, to God. And, and we're not so great. We're not Shakti Shavatars, you know, that we can just go birth after birth and, you know, try to help the mission, taking people back to God. No, we're not so great. Just help as many as we can and go back home. Hare Krishna. Perfect conclusion. Thank you. Srila Prabhupada ke Gantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam ke Samaveda Gora Bhakta Vrindi ke I'll give you a title in a while, Tapas Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna.